So we are still working in Chapter 6. We talked about functions, we talked about parameters, we talked about functions with parameters. Um, here we're going to talk a little bit about the type of parameter that we can pass to a function. So the one, um, the function type that we've seen so far is where we simply pass the parameter. If you notice, we have um, this function called do it, which is void, which doesn't return anything, but it takes a parameter called p. And if we look in main, uh, a local variable called x <clears throat> has a value of 10. And we simply output its value saying before function call, what the value of x is. And then we pass it to the function. Now, what does our function do and how does it get passed to our function? So we pass, we call the function and pass x to it. Now, it gets copied into p. So it gets copied into p. And we come here and we give p a different value. Notice up here, x is 10. And x gets copied into p during this function call as a parameter and we put a different value in p we say p equals 20. Now we come back here and after this function call we print the value of x again but we say x after the function call and we print it. So what should the value of x be? Does this p retain its value when it comes back? So no it does not. What happens is p is this local value here that gets where it's a local memory where x gets copied into p and then we change the value of p which is local to the function and then when we go back the scope of p disappears and x is still what it was so we really didn't change x so if we run this program we can see that build it <coughs> and when we run it notice it says x before call to do it is 10 and x after call to do it is still 10 it is not 20. now if we want to pass something to a function and have it changed then we use what is called the reference parameter so the first thing we do is go to a function prototype and we put an ampersand sign in front of our parameter the ampersand sign stands for the address of operator that's what it's called <clears throat> so and we come to our function heading here's my function do it function we come here and we also put the same operator, address of operator, in front of P. By putting that in, we are saying we are really passing the address of whatever parameter that is from main rather than the actual value. We are not copying the value, but we are passing the address. So the address of X gets copied into P, which means P is really not... Uh, local anymore it is looking into the address of x which has its and then its value so this way we are referring to x through p we are really not copying the value of x uh, to p in our function so now when we change p equals 20 it's really not changing the address but it's changing the value that the address is pointing to and the address is really pointing to x in main so this p equals 20 is essentially saying x equals 20. So now if we build and run this code, you will see that x before function call is 10 and x after the call is 20. So it has changed. So anytime you want to change the parameter, change the value through a function, you must use reference parameters. So reference parameters have their own pros and cons. If you don't want to change things, then don't pass it as reference, just pass it by value. If you do intend to change it, then pass it by reference, which can uh, be very helpful when there are very large values and there are certain types of data that cannot be passed by value that can only be passed by reference so we will work on a couple of more programs as we go through the rest of the chapters we will work more on reference parameters but i'm also going to work on payroll 2 which is another file that has lots of functions and we can apply the reference parameters in those functions as we work through them